welcome to Forgotten Coast Fishing. If you're new to the channel, I'm David, and I'll put out weekly videos fishing both inshore and offshore here in the Panhandle of Florida. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returning viewer, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button as well. That goes a long way to help me to continue to create these videos. Last video, we saw a barracuda out on one of the reefs. So what I thought we'd do today is head out to a reef and anchor. And I've got some various plugs and jigs and topwaters that we're going to kind of throw out there and see if we can't pick up that barracuda or maybe even some kings or Spanish mackerel. So sit tight and I'll get us out to the reef and we'll see you there. All right, before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and set out this block of chum over here. So our reef is off to the stern about 50 feet. So our current and wind has taken us this way. So this chum is going to drift that way over to the reef. And what the idea is, hopefully it's going to pull up some of those smaller bait fish and basically get things lively on this reef and hopefully attract some of our predator topwater fish. And what I'm going to start out today, this is a Rapala X-Wrap casting plug. It goes about one or two feet down and it's weighted so you can get a nice distance when you cast. And this is a Penn Battle 5000. This is a Talus PX Medium. And this is 30 pound braid. And at the end for my leader, I've got about a two section foot of number five wire. Now, so all we're gonna do is just kind of start to fan cast this all around to the back of this boat where this reef is and just see if we can pick up something. Okay, I've been jigging for about 45 minutes or so and I've started to pull up some trigger fish with this chum. So while we kind of wait and hopefully things get a little more stirred up for jigging, I'm gonna kind of drop down a standard chicken rig with three alt circle hooks and a four ounce weight and see if maybe we can grab a keeper trigger fish while we're waiting on that. Okay, got him. Finally. All right, we got that dolphin. Oh, this is a good one. That dolphin is circling. He's going to be interested in grabbing my fish. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, nice trigger. This may be our keeper. All right. Yeah, it's definitely going to be our keeper. Keeper trigger fish. All right, he's a touch over 16. They have to be 15 here in Florida, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him in the box. Unfortunately, we only get to keep one per day per person, so I've reached my limit on this trigger fish, so um, let's get some things out there, maybe try our jigging again. Check out this dolphin. I told you he was interested in my fish. Problem with some of those bigger ones, you know, you take some time to get them in. Gives that dolphin some time to get over and take them. And what they do is they they don't get hooked typically. They know how to do this. They grab them and then just run till that fish's mouth tears. And they're off away with your fish. Fortunately, they don't get hooked and you can oftentimes come back with your rig still intact. Okay, trying to stay consistent with my jig theme today. I'm going to switch to a vertical bottom type jig. This is a 100 gram jig and I'm going to toss this out and just see if there's a snapper or amberjack or something willing to take this. This would be a keeper. All right, let's get him off the hook. It's a 27 inch gag grouper, everybody. Check him out. He comes in season next month, and that's about two weeks away. So we'll get him back, and maybe we can come back and get him again. 
Hey, well that was pretty cool. That's my first gag grouper of the season. Typically what they do is they move in to shallower reefs, you know, when it gets a little cooler. But that was nice to find him here. I'll have to make a note of that. Let's get that jig back out there. That was fun. Man, look at these love bugs, y'all. We're 20 or so miles out, and we've got love bugs swarming. I mean, we've got a little bit of a north wind. I guess they're being blown offshore, and we're the only thing they can kind of hang on to. But jeez, man. Oh, oh, got him. All right, this is on the jig. All right, something over ambitious, that's for sure. A little Tom Tate, all right. I've got a bottom rig with the big hook and a big reel and big line and big everything. We'll put him on, see if we can't get our keeper amberjack. I'm just gonna hook him right through the nose. Just like that. See if this ruby red lips will pull up a keeper amberjack. Amberjack's in season now. We've got about a week and a half or so until amberjack season is closed. It was supposed to go on for several months, but they shortened it to just be a 24 day season. So it would be nice to go ahead and grab that keeper before the season closed. Oh, got him. Okay, got him. Oh, did he, no, he, he didn't get off. All right, all right, I got him. This is the Tom Tate. Oh, man. All right, come on. Ah! He broke. Oh, man. What a bummer. We're right on top of this reef and just got me down in the reef. All right, let's see if I can get another Tom Tate and try that again. Oh, got him. Got something here. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I got something here on the jig. I got tired of doing that, trying to catch that Tom Tate and just tried this vertical jig again. Seems like I've got something. What have I got? King mackerel again? Wow. Hopefully it's a Spanish instead of a king. That's a king. Well, that's kind of cool. King kind of saved the end of the day here. All right, he spit the hook. Very good. Double check, he has a king. The way to tell, easiest way is this dorsal fin. And that's a king because it's not a lot taller and blacker. So he might be a keeper, but no, he wouldn't be a keeper anyway. So I'm gonna throw him back. Well, All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. This was one of those tough days. We really didn't have much current today or much wind to kind of push the water around, but who knows, you know, it was just a tough day. Did those jigs in the morning, wasn't really successful. But, you know, I was able to get that nice grouper, and that's the first one for me in some time. And, uh, you know, got a king mackerel. That was good. And we got a keeper trigger fish for dinner, so that's good, too. So, you know, really not a bad day at all, but just, you know, one of those tough days. You just kind of have to grind it out and keep going. All right, so we made it back, and we're going to go ahead and cook up this trigger fish. And what we're going to make is sort of a common recipe for fish, where you take your fish season it with a little salt and pepper, um, do a little egg wash, put it in panko breadcrumbs, and then cook it in a skillet. But what I wanted to show you is kind of how we do it a little different so that you can kind of change the recipe or if you have people that you're serving that have different tastes, you can actually change it a little bit and make the fish different for each person. All right, so let's kind of go over our ingredients. What we have first is our plain panko breadcrumbs. I like to use plain as opposed to seasoned, so that way you can season it however you want to. And then we're going to use some capers. We have olive oil, and these are the seasonings, you know, that we're going to use tonight. But you could, this is where you could change it to make it 
for your taste or for other people's taste. We're going to do one fish with more of Italian seasoning and we're going to use one with some of this blackened redfish magic um, by Chef Paul Prudhomme. Before we get started I want to just kind of just show you this clean trigger fish fillet. I mean that's a nice white fillet and if you notice back here this is all the bloodline that you have. It's just a faint bloodline. Some of the fish even like red snapper it's a real dark bloodline so that just kind of goes to make a really nice tasting fish. So our next step is I've got the stove preheated to about medium high and I've got a cast iron skillet. I've gone ahead and put about two tablespoons of butter in and you're going to want to put about the equal amount of olive oil in there as well. And then just sort of let that get heated up. Okay and while the skillet's heating up we're going to go ahead and prepare our fish. I went ahead and salt and peppered both sides. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this fish, put it in this egg wash, give it a nice little coating, shake off the excess. So go ahead and get that in your breadcrumbs. And this is the step where you're going to change things a little bit. So this is where you're going to put on your seasoning for each fish that you're going to use. So we're going to start off this first one with the Italian seasoning. And we're going to put that on on this step after the egg wash, but before we put the breadcrumbs on. So it's going to kind of seal in the seasoning in between the egg wash and the panko breadcrumbs. So go ahead and give it a flip. We're going to go ahead and put that here. Now we've got that on the other side. So when we put this in here I'm, I like to put the serving side down first so that when we flip it we'll have our serving side on top. So now we're just going to do this other fish same way. For egg wash serving side down. Now we're going to use blackened on this other fish. You don't need to do it too much because like I said this is some wonderful tasting fish. And since we really didn't press in that breadcrumbs on this serving side we'll go ahead and flip that over and just get a little bit more coating on that side. All right we're ready to go with this one. Okay and then you're just sort of going to watch these. I have cut this down to a little closer to medium because I felt it was too hot and you don't want to burn the butter. Obviously you don't want to burn the fish either. So I'm just going to kind of keep track of this. Flip it over when it starts to get a little golden brown on that serving side um, which probably takes two or three minutes per side. All right so let's check this. So yeah this is ready to go. All right, so we're all done. We did about three minutes on that other side. And we got them looking pretty good. All right, so you want to pull the fish out and then put some tin foil on it. Those are going to stay warm while we make our brown butter sauce. All right, I've turned my heat down. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of butter probably about three tablespoons. And this is just going to make a brown butter sauce. So you're just going to kind of cook this in with all the little crumbs that fell off from the fish. You just kind of have to watch it, kind of stir it so that you don't burn your butter. You want to get it to that point where it's starting to cook, but you certainly don't want to want to burn it. Now while that's kind of going, I'm going to go ahead and get my capers in. Just eyeball it. Just kind of see how about how much you want per fish. And at this stage you could also put a little lemon juice in there. That's a very common thing to do with a butter with a brown butter sauce. Um, but we're going to leave it as is. These uh, capers you know have a little bit of tang in them as well so that'll give us a little kick. Now this will probably go I don't know maybe three minutes but I'm just going to kind of stand here and watch it. I'm not going to leave it because you'll see it. It's actually kind of starting to turn brown already. And when it turns brown, you can go ahead and get it off the heat. All right, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and turn this heat off. We can go ahead and get this, this fish plated up. So go ahead and grab you some capers for each fish. 
then you can go ahead and top it with this brown butter. Now you'll also know this brown butter is kind of done. You'll start to smell kind of a nutty smell. And that's what's going to give this sauce a really nice taste is that sort of nutty flavor. And there you go. There's your breadcrumb trigger fish with a brown butter sauce with capers. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a taste. We're going to try the Italian seasoning one first. And you can see how this is nice and flaky. Ma'am, what I'm tasting more than anything is that brown butter sauce. That is really the key to this recipe. Let me have another bite. You won't find any better in a restaurant. This is just excellent. It starts off with that trigger fish because that's a nice white flaky fish without that big bloodline like I was talking about. You know, we use those breadcrumbs, that different seasonings, that brown butter sauce, man, this is just excellent. All right, so let's try that blackened version now. Mmm, ma'am. You know, that's just the right amount of seasoning. I can taste that Cajun sort of flavor coming through, but it's not overpowering. We still get that brown butter and capers. Man, this is an excellent dish. I'm gonna leave this down in the comments so you can make this for yourself. So if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, I would certainly appreciate it if you took the time to hit that subscribe button. That simple step for you really goes a long way to help me to continue to create these videos. And if you're already subscribed, I appreciate you very much. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.